the word systems critical here, that's the S and PCS um, for a reason is that um, while people may have been able to build things like this uh, using different components, this all might look pretty familiar to some people where it's like I'm using CTs, I've got some sort of controller thing, whatever it is, maybe it's just a you know, Raspberry Pi or something, but like you could envision how you could maybe do this um, with today's stuff, but it would never, that kind of a, that would not meet the definition of a power control system because in order for this to work, um, and this is the importance of the standard, uh, one of the elements had to be that this equipment was evaluated for various faults and failures and, and, and it was shown um, to be sufficient with regards to its reliability to function and that conditions that might cause problems to the system because we are talking about preventing from overloads, overloading conductors and bus bars could create heat, heat could damage equipment, could create you know faults, could create fires, etc. Um, this is why it's critical. Things like the CTs getting flipped in the field or you know, putting put in the wrong places or something like this is, you know, has to be included in the evaluation. All these sort of, all these sort of elements, the what abouts, what ifs, um, have to be considered in order to even get a power control system evaluated um, to uh, the standards that are available today. So that's, I think, the really key part about thinking of this as a system is that it is a system evaluation, a system listing. And in this case, it would also include these inverters because these inverters must be shown to also have gone through that same evaluation to say like, well, what if the inverter, what if you're yelling something, the inverter and it doesn't hear it? Um, and then what does the controller do? What does the inverter do? Um, you know, these, these sort of things have to happen here. So that's why communication um, coordination, uh, reliability, et cetera, all is really critical with regards to the, the power control system evaluation. So this is showing a, a, a basic one that probably would be the type of um, add-on to somebody who already maybe manufactures the inverters, for instance, but there can be so many different flavors of a power control system. The NEC does not prescribe the construction or the elements or anything like that. And uh, the standard, um, we're trying hard to make sure that it also doesn't restrict um, things. So it doesn't mean that you, I'll, I'll just say this clearly and then I'll stop, which is that you don't always have to include inverters. You don't always have to include um, specific inverters and stuff like this. There can be other solutions that are sort of add-ons. This is just an, an easy one to talk about. The point here is that I'll try to summarize. This is the, the UL process is to say that um, if I have an existing standard, so this existing 1741 that was at the time in its second edition when we um, first started this, um, uh, I could try to change that document and go through the whole, you know, very rigorous process they have of, of um, getting the entire committee to go through a number of cycles of voting and, and, and um, everything on it, um, and then try to get the new language incorporated into it. Or I could, in the interest of time, just sort of introduce this thing that UL is basically writes, but in this case, they used a lot of um, industry folks to help write it. And they say, well, we feel like this applies really well to the standard, and we're, you know, we're intending to incorporate this into the standard in the future. So that's what this, that's what a CRD is. And like I say, there between the second edition and the third edition of 1741, you'll see a bunch of CRDs that we used that are now part of the um the official third edition, because we finally went through all that process. These are things that aren't addressed at the NEC. So, you know, you're not looking there. Um, you could go to an individual utility maybe and they would agree to it, but you no, know, that's not easy. Uh, you could go to a public utilities commission and then have them sort of say, everybody needs to be able to do this, but still, you still ultimately need some sort of mutual agreement as far as, well, what's the performance requirements? You know, has safety been considered? Um, how can I have confidence that it's going to operate the way that, you know, I want it to operate and it's going to fail safe. That's the whole point 
you know, where 3141 as a standard is starting to fill that niche. Um, and, you know, again, that's at least this is my bullish view on it is that um, that's a that's a key. It's a key component to the future smart grid um, and piece. You know, and like I said before, microgrids, et cetera, because it it provides an avenue by which you can we you know this industry, which has always had the best ideas and the best innovation um, and keep on doing that can keep on innovating, coming up with um, good solutions and really leveraging the technology, which is so much different than rotational machines and all kinds of stuff. Um, you, you can't really get anywhere with great ideas if you don't have, if you don't address the regulatory piece. 